Good morning once again, family. We are so excited to be able to come to you in the comfort of your home once again and to be able to bring the word of God to you. Isn't it such a beautiful space that we are able to remain connected even during this time? We thank God for technology that we are able to service your spiritual needs even during this time. We encourage you during this time to remain fervent in your spiritual walk with God, remain consistent in your prayers, remain consistent in the reading of the word, remain consistent in connecting and fellowshipping with the saints. We might not be meeting naturally, but we thank God that through prayer, we are able to remain connected. Amen. I'm so excited this morning to be able to come and share the word of God once again with you. I'm going to be reading from the book of Ephesians chapter 6, a beautiful story where Paul speaks about the armor of God. I'm going to read just a few verses. I'm going to break it out into a uh, series. Uh, we're going to deal with uh, three parts of the armor uh, this morning. And the next week again, we're going to continue from where I'm going to stop uh, this morning. The word of God says in the book of Ephesians chapter 6, verses 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand in the evil day. Having done all to stand, stand. Therefore, having girded your waist with truth, having put on the breastplate of righteousness, and having shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Amen. This morning, I just want to speak to us on the armor of God as to how even during this time, it's important for us to put on the whole armor of God. Paul writes this epistle to the church in Ephesus, and he writes it while he was under arrest. But this arrest was a different kind of arrest. This was a, he was under house arrest. This is where he was chained and he was bound. He, he would have movement, but he was chained and bound to a Roman soldier. People would come and visit him. He'd visit certain people, but the soldier would be there with him all along. And what I love uh, most is how Paul finds himself in a predicament where he's chained, he's bound. But within that situation, he is learning. Because as Abantuan Abankulunkul, while we are in the space of lockdown, I believe there's a lot of things that we can learn during this time. There's a lot of things that we can begin to take out of this season. As I said in the previous episodes, that we can either go through the space or grow through the space. But one of the things I love about Paul, and he says this, I have learned to be content in whatever state I'm in. For Paul, every space he would find himself, he would find and look for. If he was in prison, he would write in prison. If he was in prison, he would worship in prison. If he was in prison, he would begin to pray for people in prison. He, he wouldn't allow his external circumstance to hold him down or to limit and hinder his growth and his walk with God. And he says something so powerful. He says, put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor of God. And he begins to break down this armor. Uh, and he says, before we get to the armor, he says, because we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, rulers, powers, uh, forces of wickedness. Uh, and this now speaks to us as to how our battle is not carnal. That is why scripture says in the book of uh, Corinthians chapter 10, uh, our weapons are not carnal, but they are mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds. We do not wrestle against flesh and blood. As we are in this space, it's a bit easy for one to begin to look at uh, this space and begin to fight one another. And it's not a time for us to fight one another, but it's a time for us to unite. It's a time for us to, to, to begin to pray for each other to support one another and begin to understand that our enemy is the devil. And in order for us to defeat this enemy, uh, which is the devil, we need to put on the full armor of God. And this armor comprises of a few uh, elements. And one of those that Paul mentions, he says, put on the belt of truth. Put on, gird this belt of truth. And this belt of truth, uh, it speaks of, uh, scripture says, you will know the truth and the truth shall set you free. This truth, because in this space, one of the important things you need to keep reminding yourself is the truth of the word of God. There's a difference between fact and truth. 
fact uh, might be uh, true according to statistic and uh, according to research, but truth remains the highest form of reality. Uh, scripture says, to Moses, when the spies come, the two and the ten, or to choose whose report you will believe. Because the fact is, these guys are giants. But the truth of the matter is, uh, this land is for us to possess. The fact is, the lockdown, the economy is melting, uh, things are declining, we are being downgraded. That's the fact. But the truth says, God shall supply all your needs and our needs according to his riches in glory. The, the, the truth is people are being sick. This virus, uh, people are being contaminated. People are being diagnosed. The statistics are rising up. That's the fact. But the truth says he sent forth his word to heal us. And it's up to you now, what do you believe? Whose report do you believe? It's a time for us to believe the report of the word of God. The truth of the word of God. Amen. Another thing I love about truth is how truth also is relative. Truth is relative. Um, Jesus, uh, in the book of John, chapter 11, they speak of um, his disciples, uh, his friend dies, Lazarus, and they get to him and say, Lazarus, your friend is dead. And uh, they call him. And then he says to them, no, he's not dead. He's asleep. And then that's truth, he's asleep. And then he changes the story now and the narrative, and he says, no, Lazarus, Lona, he's actually dead. So he gives a different report to the one who comes and who needs to go back and says, no, he's asleep. And then he changes and he says, no, he's actually dead. And my question is, Jesus, why do you now begin to give truth, but you give truth in different levels? Uh, and to me, it made sense. Uguti, the reason he said he's dead is because to these, Laba Begaba Chalukuti Agalalanga Ophila is because Beganabu. He was able to, uh, he said to Ulazar Agafanga Ulele, and Jongo Balele, I am the resurrection and the life. And he wanted them to be able to journey in truth so that the truth that they had, okay, it was truth, but because so he is the way, the truth, and the life. So Paul says something so beautiful here, and he says, put on the belt of truth. And it becomes important again for us to understand that this truth, uh, it, it, one of the things about the belt, the belt holds uh, the weapons of warfare. The belt, because one of the things that truth does, it, and it holds everything together in place. The Roman soldier, the belt that they had, the, the, the breastplate would rest on the belt. On the belt, the sword would be put. On the belt, they would have three things. They would have bread, they would have water, and they would have, they would have oil. And these things are very important because they would be very critical in times of war and when they were fighting. And this speaks to us as as to how during this time, truth enables us to keep the word of God securely uh, next to us. Truth enables us to have the word of God, have space for the word of God. Truth enables us for the oil of the Holy Spirit to be kept. Truth enables the uh, the breastplate of righteousness to have a place to hinge. A and this becomes very, 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 very important for us to hold on to the truth of the word of God. Because it, it, the truth of God doesn't change. The facts might change, but truth remains the highest form of reality. And mine to us this morning really is let us put on the belt of truth. And then he continues to say, after you've put on the belt of truth, he says, um, put on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. This speaks of now our right standing that we have with God. This speaks of the righteousness that we have because of the death, the burial, and the life of Jesus Christ. He says the, this breastplate for the Roman soldier would have a mirror, and this mirror would reflect. So every time uh, they would be in battle, uh, this breastplate would have this mirror that will blind the soldier who is fighting this particular soldier with the breastplate. And this is what happens for us as a when we put on the breastplate of righteousness and being in right standing with God, when the devil looks at us, he is blinded by our righteousness. Because it's not a righteousness because of our good works, but it's a righteousness because of the blood and the finished work of Calvary. It's a righteousness that we get because of what Jesus accomplished for us on the cross at Calvary. 
It is a righteousness where Paul says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away, and behold, the new has come. It's a righteousness. Look, piwi kamelisha, loguti aksana klashwa kulaba ebago krestu. And this righteousness as well, what I love about it, it protects your heart. It, it protects the vital organ of your heart. So during this time, once again, I urge you, ensure that you put on your breastplate of righteousness. He also speaks of putting on the shoes shod with the gospel of the preparation of peace. Because during this time, it becomes important for us to continue to preach the gospel of peace. It, 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 where we continue to kshumayela, levangeli as best as we can. We continue to love people. We continue to be an extension of the gospel of Christ. Jesus says, uh, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, for he has anointed me to preach the good news. Because the gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. Nothing less, nothing more. It, it, it is is good news. And during this time where there is gloom, there's a lot of news, there's a lot of uncertainty, there's a lot of bad news, it's a good time for us as we put on the armor to preach the good news of Jesus Christ, to continue to say that there is hope, to continue to say that Jesus has plans for us, plans which are to prosper us, plans which are to give us a future and a hope, to say that he knew us before we were formed in our mother's womb, to continue to say that the greatest days of our lives lie ahead of us. So what am I saying to us this beautiful morning? Put on the full armor of God. Put on this armor. Ensure that during this time you don't compromise any part of this armor. May the good Lord bless, keep you, make his face shine upon you. Once again, we continue to encourage uh, the family to continue to give. If you'd like to give, the banking details will be uh, displayed on the screen. Let's continue to be faithful in that space of giving and tithing and continue to pray and remain connected. Until we meet again, may the good Lord bless and keep you. We love you guys so much. Be blessed. Amen. Thank you so much once again for joining us and being part of our service. We truly appreciate that. Thank you for making time to remain connected with us during this time. We encourage you as best as you can, stay safe, stay in the house, and continue to abide to the regulations which have been set in place by our leaders. And over and above that, remain connected in prayer, in the word, in giving, as the Holy Spirit lays it in your heart. I believe this message was a blessing to you. I encourage you to interact with us. Please share, like, comment. And if you maybe gave your life to Christ or you want to reconnect to Christ, you'd like us to help you grow, please inbox us. We are more than willing and glad to walk this journey with you. Till we meet again next week, same time, same place, remain connected.